we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I am Noelle Curtis, the Access to Capital Manager. I'm your co-host for this evening. And we have Ms. Laura Lane here as well, who is the lead facilitator of tonight's workshop, where we are talking about how to launch and or grow your company. So, so happy that you all are here. And we're just going to go ahead and get started. So let me share my screen and share this and then we'll get going. Mm, such the wrong one. While Noelle is pulling that up, let me just introduce myself, Laura Lane Taylor, Managing Director of Programs here at Sunshine uh, Enterprises. I am a proud graduate of our Community Business Academy, um, and I have been with the team formally since 2018, um, starting out as an instructor, coming on full-time, and um, happy to be leading one of the baddest teams in the business. I mean, we've got a great, great team here at Sunshine. So, and oh, Sylvia. Oh, okay. No problem. I see her message. Um, so I joined the team officially in October of last year. Uh, with access to capital manager. So I really am here to help you all navigate the wonderful world of funding your company. And that could be anywhere from questions about uh, your loan application process and or documentation that you need and then strategies to show strength within your company, which is some of the things we're gonna touch on tonight. And I'm excited to be part of the team, excited to help you all on your journey. Um, we're getting money into the pockets and hands of you, the small business owner and helping your companies grow. And that's why we keep asking you to submit those surveys, keeping us abreast of what's going on with your company. And, um, we are gonna keep pushing forward. Uh, so tonight's agenda, sorry, my, there we go. Here we go. Okay. So tonight we're going to, I guess we can do our icebreaker because it's not a lot of us in the room right now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do an icebreaker. Uh, Laura's going to um, bring some our story history for those of you all who might not know. We're then going to jump right into some heavy meat and potatoes, you guys. So I advise you to get pen and paper in case you have questions that pop up. We do have the chat room to the corner. You can uh, drop any questions in there that you might have. We'll stop and, and answer those throughout the, the time together tonight. We have a couple of exercises for you all to do. And um, we're also going to talk about some more program services and wrap up with any additional questions. So the icebreaker is pretty simple. We're just going to go around the, um, the room, the call here. You're going to introduce your name, your company, what your product or service is. And then we're going to do two questions. One, in the last two weeks, what's one thing that you're very excited that your company had a success in? And we also um, want to know within the last two weeks also what you might have had a struggle in. Um, and so I will give an example. You all know I'm a fellow entrepreneur as well. So my name is Noelle Curtis. And although I work at Sunshine on a nine to five, I have a five to nine as well. My company is called Busy Boulevard Inc. And we are a software development company where we focus on financial analytic and appointment setting software. And in the last two weeks, I had such successful conversations. I believe I've secured um, about $80,000 in um, private equity investment into the company. So I'm very excited about that. And um, in the last two weeks, an experience, an issue that came up was legal. I had to uh, go through <laughs> a very long list of what type of legal documentation we need in place to bring our software fully into market. So it's a, a nice $5,000 retainer that we have to uh, put in place to cover privacy issues and terms and conditions. So simple as you all see, there's the, there's the example. And I'm just gonna go straight down my list and see who I see here. So I'm gonna start with Brandy first. And then Brandy, you're gonna toss it over to uh, the next person you see in your screen. 
And if you haven't launched yet, just talk about your pre-launch phase, okay? So well, answer the same question. Say I'm driving, like I'm driving. Okay, Brandy. So did you hear the questions? Sorry. I'm driving right now. I am so sorry. I just did not want to miss this Zoom. What was the question? And no, I did not hear clearly. I'm sorry. I had to roll my window up because it's very, I'm on 79th Street right now. No problem. So you can introduce your, well, we're pretty, well, one, focus on driving. You can keep your camera off. <laughs> um, so, and if oh, you wait, want to. What? Oh, oh. We'll. we'll oh, listen. Oh. I'm listening. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Um, so we just what your name is, your company name, or if you have started, what your product or service is. Uh, one success and one struggle in the past two weeks. Okay, so my name is Brandy Booker. I um, I'm an insurance agent right now, but I'm looking to launch a CMOS business that I would like to really get off the ground. I've been selling, and I have some customers that I do service every two weeks. Um, but I haven't gotten like a website or anything. I just pretty much market on social media and, um, I want to get into also doing CMOS smoothies, CMOS lemonade, CMOS, uh, health products like you can use for your hair and your nails and your skin. And mm -hmm. so I'm just looking to launch, which is why I decided to register for this, um, workshop so I can kind of learn and get some ideas as to how to go about getting started and, marketing myself well wonderful you're you're in for a treat tonight so uh focus on your drive and keep your listening ear <laughs> yeah my daughter has me on an emergency i'm like i have a meeting <laughs> worries okay so, so I, drive I, safely. I drive being rude and hello to everyone sorry about that thank you no problem uh i'll call on okay. brian brian next brian banks Is he still there? I can't. He is. He's just unmuting. Oh, okay. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I am uh, working with a group of 10 churches. We're launching uh, some worker co-ops. Uh, and we're in the process of raising about uh, $10 million uh, to, to launch this project. Uh, in the last two weeks, we succeeded in putting in our first uh, screens. We're, we're, one of the things we're doing is putting in each of our churches uh, with a group called Patient Point uh, Medical Information Screens. Uh, we're ultimately going to have about a hundred screens uh, in, in 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 various locations to help people uh, identify health information and uh, uh, do other things. Uh, in the last two weeks, we I've, I guess our biggest issue is since we're starting up, just getting all of the pastors together. Uh, they're excited. Uh, getting them to see the opportunity has been the biggest issue I've, I've faced in the last two weeks. All right. Well, that's great. You, you had some successes. And what do they say? It's like wrangling cats, getting a lot of people's schedules together. So good luck on that. But they're, they're committed. So it'll happen. Um, I'm going to go to Sylvia. Hello, everyone. Apologies that I'm roaming around the house, but I'm listening. Um, so my name is Sylvia. I am clearly not American, but uh, I've been living here for a good while. Uh, I have a travel agency. I started in 2020, which was not an ideal year to start a travel agency, but, you know, I survived. Um, and uh, so here it is. My clients love me. I love what I do. Uh, but I am a mess with finance and I made a mess when I moved from Virginia to Illinois in terms of 
I thought I had closed the company there. And just this week I found out it was not closed. And then my clients were paying me for their trips. But in the meantime, I was putting the invoices in the name of my company here. <gasps> so disaster, disaster. Okay, so that's the that's the experience issue. The success uh, of the past week is that my new website, which is looking great, is almost ready. And that I got invited to a fair uh, uh, by the, you know, um, tourism of France, you know, of a, like a ministry of uh, tourism in France, but it's going to be in Los Angeles. So, but still they are paying for me to go, which is like, ah, because I'm a real small fish, one girl show. So yeah, trying to survive amongst sharks, but I'm good at what I do and I love it. <laughs> so that's it. That's awesome. You, your ecosystem, you will find your, your pond and your ocean and it'll grow with you. So that's wonderful. Um, let's see, I see, I don't know how to pronounce this. Is this Marquise, Marquise Johnson? Hello everyone. Yes, I'm Marquise Johnson. I'm a CBA graduate from um, December of 22. Um, I already had started a staffing agency called Platinum Medical Staffing, where I supply um, temporary medical professionals to different healthcare facilities. So with that business, one of my challenges have, was I was having trouble getting workers' comp insurance. <laughs> and so um, that was one of my challenges, and I finally got it all together. So that was a challenge and a triumph at the same time. Um, the business that I uh, sought out uh, with Sunshine is my book bar. I love to read. It's called Page Turner's Book Bar. And so it's a, a nice, cool place. It's going to be a nice, cool place for literary lovers. So um, I am still in the startup phase with that, getting everything together. And so I did get my logo done. And then I'm also with a program called uh, ECDI by uh, Empower with GoDaddy. And they're going to help me to learn how to launch my website. So the only wins with that business. So all around things are going great. And I like your hair, Noel. You pick me, girl. <laughs> Thank you. No, that's awesome. I'm like, I remember talking and I always uh, mispronounce your name. So I do apologize, but that's great. We love to hear it. Um, let's see, iPhone HI. I don't know who you are. You like I saw your picture and then you left back out and then our, our group is growing quicker. So Laura, I don't know how many more you want to do. We might be. Okay. iPhone HI. We can come That's back. Now, um, yeah. iPhone uh, HI, are you able to unmute and introduce yourself? Yes. My name is Billy McGee. Oh, that's Billy. Hi, Billy. I see you're in two places. There you go. Yep. Uh, okay. All right. My apologies. I'm I'm in, in transit, but I wanted to make sure I, I, I checked in. Okay. So um, let everybody know your company name and service and last two weeks success and last two weeks um, challenge. Great. So my name is Billy McGee. My... You muted yourself again, Billy. It may be unsafe for you to unmute. <laughs> Billy, we can't hear you. There, he just unmuted. Okay, there you go. Startup businesses, property managers, uh, and also new, new um, uh, current existing nonprofits as well. Uh, the two-week challenge has been uh, submitting proposals to clients who are not yet ready. And so typically uh, what it looks like is you submit to them a, a project uh, proposal and they ask you some very basic questions. And through the questioning process, you just get a understanding that they're not really ready. So trying to uh, a uh, screen those clients as well as uh, get those clients ready for a future project might not be a bad idea. So that was a challenge. Uh, one of the successes that I get uh, quite a bit of um, callbacks from uh, satisfied customers. And I think one of the things that has worked well, really well for me is that I do a retainer service. And so what the retainer service does, it, uh, it bills uh, quarterly. And if you're on retainer with me, uh, typically when you call me, the 
you, you, your phone call gets answered versus going to voicemail and, you know, getting back three business days or two business days or whatever that is. So that has worked really well. And the clients are happy with that. And so a lot of times the questions that they ask are pretty basic questions. I can respond right away. And so that, uh, that's something that they're happy with. Awesome. Awesome. So, so that we can get through everybody's introduction, try to keep it to like a 30 second pitch name, product name, et cetera, et cetera, challenge, success. Okay. Sharon, you're up next. Hello everyone. My name is Sharon Thomas and the name of my organization is Kids uh, Connection and Youth Coaching. And the service is we help children, my, me and my, myself and my team, we help children uh, uh, with their God-given uh, potential gifts and talents and um first before we do that uh our niche is to discover help them discover well to discover with them their parents to see if there's any issues that's holding them back before we get them um started on the uh, journey of uh discovering their uh, gifts and talents and so um i haven't officially started yet and so i'm working on it and it's going to be a non-profit organization and so yeah that's that's it. And, and I just, as, as we speak, spoke to um, a nonprofit organization with WBDC, uh, Women Development uh, uh, Center, uh, so uh, today. And so they're going to help me. Uh, I've been doing the paperwork to uh, register with the state, and I'm working on my 501c3. And so I'm just going, going through the paperwork right now to uh, get the, uh, my organization started. That's beautiful. Yes. Got a fresh start. Yes. All right. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see. Thank who, you, um, Cassandra. Not to cut you guys off, but I wanted to know would this session be recorded or? It is, it is being recorded. Okay, that's good because I might have to come off for a minute and <laughs> come back in. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Hello, I'm Cassandra. I'm the owner of uh, Urban Sip Teas. It's a Caribbean-inspired loose leaf tea. Uh, located here in Chicago. Uh, we're planning to launch this year, um, probably within the next few months, um, which is all that's left of this year, really. <laughs> um, over the last couple weeks, um, we've had some challenges. I actually realized that um, we haven't been able to like locate some farmers that we could um, potentially partner with to kind of craft some of our teas locally. Uh, right now we're outsourcing a lot of our herbs. So I kind of do want to um, bridge that gap. I've been going to farmers markets and stuff. So it's kind of been a little easier meeting some people, but uh, that's been a challenge. And then the air quality has been killing me. That's a personal challenge, but I cannot breathe out here. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but Triumphs, I just get, got my uh, shared kitchen user license. So I am able to uh, officially um legally put teas together and sell so um that's about it for me and i'm glad to be here and i do love your hair oh well it's just yeah. i love it <laughs> thank you thank you that's awesome cassandra um love to hear that share kitchen because you know people they start to try to mix and stuff at home and it's like mm, no and we'll definitely be able to put you in contact with um some local growers so um yes we'll get that resource going for you okay chris Thank you just you so much. The screen so you're up next and i think i just missed our little prompt there it is chris houston yes i'm here i'm sorry I, i'm a little caught off guard what'd you say oh uh we're just doing introductions you happen to pop into my screen so I, I, that's how i was going through um so do you see the prompt on the screen your name your company if you have launched what your product or service is uh one success and one struggle over the past two weeks oh okay yeah well my name is chris houston uh company company's name is uh i'm about success um and what we do is uh personal development company that offers uh, motivational art as well as coaching programs. And success is, um, we recently had a kind of vendor opportunity, you know, just had some products there and was able to um, 
add to our network that database and also sell some of our products. Um, and the challenge right now is connecting platforms to um, programs that I would try that that I would like to offer. So I'm I'm working through that part. Okay. Nothing like some program and administration. Get your juices <laughs> flowing. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome, welcome. Jackie, you are up next. Look, you all keep popping in my screen. I don't know how this thing keeps moving, but uh, Jackie. Okay. Hello, 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 Miss Nicole. I love the hair too. Um, okay, real quick. I know we're pressed for time. Uh, my name is Jackie Boykin. And my company name, well, actually, I've, I've decided to expand now. So I'm going to go into consulting. Overarching is my goal is to reduce the wealth gap um, for, um, well, for, for Americans, I guess we could say that. And what I traditionally do is I actually show people from where they are with the money that they have, how to actually eliminate their debt, uh, in a very short amount of time and take that money and convert it into wealth. So I am insurance licensed. Uh, I, I got all the, you know, all that stuff, and I have a very keen eye uh, for finances, and uh, and we use, I would say, AI. So it's it's far advanced than what you have normally seen versus a Susie or Dave or whatever whatever you've seen. Uh, and then one of my successes in the last two weeks is spoke with the CEO, and their goal is to get home ownership to seventy five percent, and I want to say the black and brown, but as far as that community and to close that. So it, it's very well-rounded for us. They have a procedure where they'll work with the person and they actually have the funding. So they work with federal credit unions. They've actually uh, have that. And if you would like to actually become a loan officer, you can do that without going through all of the requirements that because it's a federal credit union. So it's a pretty uh, full circle moment for us. If we can get the people financed and work with where they are right now with their finances, go after the people that they have bad contracts, whether they got cars or whatever, we have attorneys on staff to do that. And then we take them and then once they get in home ownership, we show them how to pay it off rapidly within seven to nine years. And we take that and then get their equity up. So if they want to do businesses or they want to invest in other properties, they can do that. And we build wealth simultaneously. So it's arbitrage. So now they have an income that they can that they can have tax free. OK, tax free. And if you get sick, if you're a business owner, we got you covered in that area, too. So that so that when you have Thank things you. and challenges of life, you can say, oh, OK, OK, great. I'm I thought really I was doing good yeah. on the tax. And I was like, Thank OK, you. get it together. OK, so okay. That, that's exactly what I do. Issues got good, great tools and got to get everybody to work together. So gotcha. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. Okay, uh, we had a couple of more, and I think we're going to give a couple more minutes to uh, introductions, but it looks like I saw um, Jacqueline Franklin. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Jacqueline Franklin, and I am a uh, jewelry consultant, and um, I sell um, costume jewelry, basically. And um, my company is Right Stone For You. I've been in business for about three years. I would say my challenge has been um, successful, effective social media posts. Um, I'm, I think I'm getting, getting the hang of it after all of this time. Um, but that's been the, a challenge, how to get uh, responses. And I would say successes, I have uh, since May partnered with a wellness company so that um, I'm looking to promote inner health, personal health, health for the environment, um, wealth, and beauty. Beauty as um, Externally, as well as the jewelry, and as well as as the products. So that's me. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, we're gonna bring it down to the end. Okay, so I have Lisa Wyatt, and then 
Jennifer, who I think I got everybody. I have Lisa and Jennifer as my last two. Rodney and if, was and the Rodney, first okay. one here. Uh, and I'm looking right <laughs> at his name too. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so that's how we'll do it. Jennifer, Lisa, Rodney. Oh, Jennifer. Okay. I'm Jennifer Burke. And um, my business idea is still in the works. It's a nonprofit. Um, basically, it would just help um, like the abandoned buildings and vacant buildings in our communities um, just to um, kind of get the community. Um, that's kind of the nonprofit part of it. Um, some members of the community to help fix them up and then um, make it so that um, there are options for affordable housing. Um, so um, in the last two weeks, I've seen my company succeed in just getting the overall business plan together. Um, in the last two weeks, I've seen my company experience issues in um, startup costs. Um, and just the resources. All I can say is welcome to the CEO world with that one, Jennifer. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yes, we're, we're going to talk about some of that tonight. So um, Great. You definitely walk away with some useful help. Um, Thank you. Lisa Wyatt, you're up next. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, uh, the name of my company is Wentz uh, Handcrafted Leather Designs and Apparel. And I was actually in um, one of the uh, the cohorts. It was the artisan cohort like a, a few years ago. And like right after I graduated, it was my niece and I, we were about to hit the ground running right after I graduated or finished the, the, the cohort. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I've been fighting that battle for the last two years. And, you know, I beat cancer. Thank God. <laughs> and Damn. so now I'm ready to yeah. back into, thank you, um, get back into launching my business. And so um, that's why I'm here. Well, welcome. Thank Come on, you. yeah, you sent the room up with that one. Um, <laughs> you right, you might have like the highlight of the night. Um, <laughs> but we're so happy that you're here, literally, physically, and you know, in 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 the class in the conversation tonight. So um, you. welcome, welcome. Um, and then Rodney, you're gonna bring us in, bring in the okay. rear. <laughs> I'm actually in Chesterton, Indiana, at a Chase Bank, upgrading computers. So I'm you know multitasking as usual. Uh, I do this part time and really helps out. But anyway, so Audible Edge Music is um, and um, RG Galleries and Events. And because of Quandra, um, a few years ago, she had let me launch at um, Black Moon Expo. So I added a art component to my music company. And um, so my su the success is is I'm booked for the whole summer playing jazz. Booked exactly. for the whole summer. Ain't got to worry about gigs. Uh, and because of sunshine, I've got plenty of vending opportunities for my art business. Um, not too many challenges. I did get a, um, I got the Twin Cities Target grant. So they're doing my e-commerce website for my uh, um, my um, record label. And they also, um, they extended my grant and they assigned a person for uh, branding and target market because that's something I have a lot of trouble with. And um, so the last piece of it is, um, I decided I love uh, brandy and bourbon, but I am creating a rye whiskey brand and I decided to turn my company. So the music, the art and the rye, one whole lifestyle brand. So I'm having so much fun with that. I got to go to Kentucky and research my, uh, my, my recipe. So that's it. Awesome. And thanks for sunshine. Y'all, y'all have helped me get here. I'm inspired by so many people and the training. So that's my piece. I'm out. <laughs> well, wonderful. Uh, well, thank you all so much. We like to make sure you all know who all is in the room when we're in these calls. And when the when the room is not too uh, full, we, we give you all the space to do it. Um, a shameless plug, uh, we will have a how to purchase advertising um, 
tomorrow how to purchase ads. So I'm doing that workshop tomorrow morning at 11. So check your newsletter. I think I'll be able to drop the um, link in before the end of the night uh, if you all want to RSVP and show up for that because marketing is not for the faint. Um, but okay, so we're going to keep going. Laura, this is you on. Yeah, so um, I think a lot of folks are already connected with Sunshine, but a few folks aren't. So just a little bit about how we um, got started. We were born out of a nonprofit called Sunshine Gospel Ministries that had been looking um, and doing entrepreneurship work with youth. And it was really empowering the, the entrepreneurial mindset, but was not bringing more money into the household. So Joel and one of his uh, colleagues, Ethan Daly, um, were looking to focus on uh, entrepreneurship with adults and growing jobs that way in our communities. And our headquarters is, is in Woodlawn. Um, and they found a national model um, uh, with Rising Tide Capital, and we have been utilizing that model since 2012. We have over 1,400 um, entrepreneurs who've um, graduated through the program. And as you can tell from part of the testimonies we just heard, as well as um, the role that Noel plays, we are with you for the, the life of your business. So we're really excited um, to offer this workshop both to Sunshine alum, as well as uh, newcomers um, in the you know, Chicagoland ecosystem to share um, some of what we've learned and to, um, and to hopefully connect you with some more resources. But Sunshine is here to stay and we're here because of you. Yes, and we have a little bitty poll that we're going to drop in. Is this my right time? Yeah, yeah, there we go. I'm sorry. I'm not used to Google Slides for presentations, <laughs> so you got to uh, uh, pardon me. All right, so we have a poll that has been launched, 10 simple yes or no questions. Uh, Tyreek, I guess you launched it. Thank you. Um, and while that poll is going on, um, this is just so we can get a sense of where you are in your journey and um, how we can better serve you with future workshops as well. Can everybody see the poll? Do you see the poll, Laura? It looks launched. Yes. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up when you're done. Yeah, we got, um, it's tracking it. It's about three people. I'm trying to get the. Thank <gasps> you. Okay, we got one more person and then. We're, we're trying to make our workshops a, a nice bit of interaction and still information um so thank you so we will use that information thank you so much um and we'll be able to uh Tyreek you might have to pull it down because I, I can't stop my poll thing well, we can't see it from your screen, so. Can't, okay, well then let me close that. Okay, so we know we have people at different stages in their company journey on the call tonight, but I'm, I wanna spend some time giving some insight and some background into what um, lenders are looking at and some indications that are universal 
um, that lenders associate with your company at particular stages that you might be in, okay? So this is a combination of what your sales matrix would look like according to how long you've been in company, uh, how long your company has been actually open, started doing revenues and sales. So in the first stage, you have like zero to three years, that's considered startup. And there um, you, I'm gonna talk about four different areas that um, correlate with each one of these segments. Um, but some of the things that lenders are looking at, they're looking at your management team. Um, they're looking at you for your expertise in the area that you are launching this company in. But then they're also looking to see um, how are you assuring up your company in areas you might not be as strong in, right? You might be wonderful at sales, when you're in one-on-one -on -one interaction with your customer, but I heard someone say the social media marketing is a pain point. Um, so those are things that, um, that you want to be mindful of in this area. You're also looking at your assets within your company, right? Like how much cash do you have in your company? Oftentimes it's little to none because you are self-funding your company. You have to buy your equipment. You have to buy inventory. So any money that you do have might be tied up pretty instantaneously. Um, and your priority is one, letting people know that your company exists and you have this service or product that you're offering. And then also making sure that you are getting customers who are actually making sales and sticking to your company. Um, then you'll have what's called the growth stage. And that is in years three to 10. Now this, it seems like a long time, right? Like three to 10 years of being in a growth stage. It's true because now your company, you personally might be a little stretched um, if you're the only um, founder or a solo um, person managing and running your company, um, again, your cash is still pretty limited, but now you should have had um, some uptick in your sales, you should have an uptick in your inventory costs, and even having to decide whether you're buying more equipment to expand. Um, this is when you really start looking for more cash, and this is actually when banks really start to look at you as a potential for lending, but they also look at the um, amount of risk that, be, that would be associated with your company at this stage. What they're really looking for is to see how have you managed your customers and the cash that's coming in, how has that been able to support the growth of your company? That's what the business, that's what the lenders are really, really looking for. And when I say lenders, I'm talking banks specifically. Um, but at this point, now you realize, hey, I need some more money, right? It's always a need for more money as you're growing your company, but the need is different. So maybe you've gotten more customers into your pipeline and you need more equipment to help handle the demand, or you need more staff to help handle your customer service uh, demand. Um, this is when the priorities in your company will start to shift. And now you're looking for, how can I put like more management uh, procedures and even people in place and so now your company is in this beautiful growth stage. Year 10 to 20 is what they call the mature stage. So this is when you have been real seasoned in your industry. Um, you've got a nice sales team or a management team that you've developed. You have a crystal clear pipeline of customers that are coming in. Um, your sales might be starting to level out. And now you're really starting to see an uptick in your cash in the bank that's able to sit there. But this is also when you might start discovering new market opportunities that although you've spent the past, you know, 10 to 19 years getting to this point, you now are really having your eyes peeled to see, hey, where else can I go with this company? And that can go in a couple of different ways. Do you want to sell the company? Do you want to continue working in the company and pursue other opportunities within the company? Um, this is when you really are going to start to have these major succession planning decisions and conversations. Uh, but it's also where you're starting to really, um, again, have a better foothold in your market and in your financial um, st standing of your company. Now, the, the 20 year plus, they call it the decline. And the decline can look a couple of ways, right? It can be a matter of you are tired. <laughs> Your management team is like, hey, we're ready to go. We've done this. This has been a beautiful ride. Let's sell this. Let's take our assets. Let's liquidate the company. Let's hang up and go to the beach. 
or it could be a matter of we we've started to hit a decline but we've um, identified this other opportunity and so now it can actually throw you back into a growth cycle all over again and so you're not declining to the point of we're going to close but you're declining in this particular uh, section of your industry you've discovered some new opportunities you have money that you can invest in that new opportunity and so now your company hits another growth market so the um, time spectrum when it relates to the growth of your company while while banks and lenders have these four categories um, pretty much identified, you as entrepreneurs need to be mindful of it because now this should take some of the ease and pressure and stress off of you thinking, oh, how come my company isn't skyrocketing overnight, okay? This is tried and true years of IRS information, bank lender information to get this, this um, curve that you're seeing here. So when, when we talk startup and growth for you as entrepreneurs within the Sunshine ecosystem, that's our sweet spot. That's where we really help focus um, the, the attention, the information that we present, the support and the workshops that we give to you all behind the scenes. Um, now, here's some true company growth assessments that you should consider. So everyone wants to have a company that's successful, that has wonderful traction with their customers. Um, but how many of you have been the customer in your own company? That is a legitimate um, thing that you should do. You should reassess your customer journey. I would recommend doing it like every quarter or anytime you bring out a new product. You want to be the customer in your company. You want to know that if um, you went to your website and you clicked on a link, that product that you're selling or offering is ready to sell or even pre-sale, right? And that that process that the customer would go on is well documented and well tracked. Walk the path that the customer will go on as they're going through a sale transaction within your company. Where is the information stored? What does your tech stack look like behind the scenes? So if you um, have a database or a customer uh, relationship management tool that you're you're using to track your customer activity and your sales, which you all should, um, you want to make sure that all of that information is being stored in a reliable place where you have access to it. And again, any links that your customers are going to touch as it relates to trying to make an appointment, buy one of your products, um, refer you to someone else, whatever that process is you're sending them on the journey for, make sure all of those links work. The other thing you want to do is make a note. And when I say note, I mean like literally write out the process. I say note because sometimes people get overwhelmed when here it's a process. You got to write it all out. You do. You need to know every single step in your, um, in your, I call it the tech stack again, but if there is MailChimp that you're using, what are the passwords? Where is everything going? If you're using um, a chat bot, what chat bot has been programmed? What is the flow of conversation that's going on with your chat bots? If you're using an automated email blast, what are those um, websites that you're using to track that information and send the information back? You want to make sure that you have this, doc this process well documented because you're not going to have time to keep doing this, right? You're going to need to bring somebody in. You're going to need to train someone. And all of your staff needs to know the customer journey within your company. You need to be able to articulate that to um, your staff and your team that comes along. And then uh, something that people often overlook, but they really should not. What KPIs or key performance indicators are you tracking within your company? I can tell you five um, right off the top that you should absolutely be looking at everything from how long it takes a customer to actually make a, a purchase within your company, um, how much each of your customers are spending, how often they're coming back to spend with you. Are they referring anyone to you? And are you given any type of incentive for them to refer things to you? Um, but then the last one will be about a budget. 
everything that you're doing in your company ties back to a dollar. Every single dollar that comes in your company should have a defined, dedicated use for it to go back out of your company. Or when it comes into your company, where is it going to go? If you make a sale, what are you going to do with the revenue that comes in? You have to pay bills. You have to buy more inventory. You have to pay payroll. You have to continue to market. You have to save. You have to be prepared for what's coming um, in the future of your company. So when you're talking about growth, you have to first identify where you are, make sure that you're able to eliminate any holes in your process that you might see, and that will strengthen the, the growth trajectory that you're going on. Because you might discover that you have a breakdown after your customer makes a purchase, the follow-up right? To ask them to come back and make another purchase or ask them to make a sale. Maybe that isn't happening, although you think it's supposed to. Um, so make sure you go through um, a company growth assessment on your company, find the areas that you need to um, strengthen up, and then this will give you a uh, better stability as you're looking to bring on more clients. I think there's a chat in there. Um, <laughs> okay. Yep. New concept. I'm glad to hear that. We, we, we keep trying to keep it fresh around here, right? You gotta, we gotta search low and high for information. Uh, so, Lord, yeah, no, well, go ahead and, um, hit enter so we can see what's, um, in each one of those. So, um, this is a growth chart that, um, takes a look at different, um, growth stages of business. So as you can see, the majority of businesses are in the nominal growth and marginal growth category. So what does that look like? Um, that means their growth rate, you know, is, you know, nominal to less than 5%. The time horizon that they're really managing uh, business um, can be day-to-day, -day, weekly, monthly. Resources and overhead, you know, are low and, and focused. Um, management style from reactive to tactical. Um, some of the nominal growth businesses require not a large technological investment or you know, low cost tech investment. Um, source of finance is often family, friends, and you know, self or you know, customer funded business too, right? Um, maybe even um, some bank investment. Um, management skills are often um, connected to the production of the product or the performance of the service. Um, and then as, um, as you acquire um, more team members that you have to manage, then focusing on management. And the reward is um, um, you know, regular income and then moving forward. Um, then a number of businesses um, move into managed growth. Um, now, it's fine to stay in marginal growth if that's where you are. It's just that the majority of the businesses, you know, are, you know, nominal to marginal growth. Um, this next group of 15 to 20 percent of folks in managed growth um, are, you know, can see a, a higher growth rate. Um, they're getting more complex in the resources that they need. Uh, sometimes an industry that you're raised, that you're doing your business in is, is complex and highly regulated to begin with, right? So sometimes there are early stage businesses that are also complex. And then um, managed growth businesses are also at the stage where it's not just financing that they're looking for, but there's also investors and a lot more strategy delegation involved um, and equity involved as well. And then less than 1% of our businesses are really aggressive growth where they're looking at angel investors, VC, um, and it's important to sort of just understand this growth phase um, to um, understand that the majority of businesses are not really in that aggressive position where they're looking at private equity and, and venture capital. We have some of our clients coming to us saying, hey, I'm ready, you know, really want to talk to VC when that's actually not a good match for the growth stage that they're in and maybe even the industry that they're in. So it's really important to sort of understand sort of what are trends in your industry that you are growing your business in, what growth um, stage you're in. And, and like I mentioned before, it's perfectly fine if you have found your customer, found your niche to stay in one particular growth area and then 
what else do you need to know if you really want to move to managed growth and aggressive growth? Um, and, and the different sort of financing structures and sometimes legal structures that would need to accompany that. Um, this is based upon research by one of our colleagues um, um, at Notre Dame, Michael Morris, who works with a lot of business support um, organizations and universities around the world and sort of understanding and defining different types of entrepreneurs, um, the support that they need. Um, now, our, our best intel is our 1400 alumni who tell us what they need. <laughs> um, but it is really great to work with people like Mike who help us um, sort of collect the data, put a name to it. And, and then that way we can be supportive based upon sort of the growth stage that your company is in. Okay. Yeah. Um, into it. You know, actually, before we do this, Noel, I actually wanted to go to the other slide showing where we have. Oh, you have that later. Okay, no, we can go ahead and do that. Yeah, can I can I look at that yeah. one first? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so in in supporting, uh, so this is a little bit about Sunshine for those of you who um, are not as familiar. So our Community Business Academy. Um, works for people who are sort of pre-venture through established growth. Um, and it even works for folks who um, are even 10 plus years in their business, but they've hit a plateau and they're trying to figure out um, which direction that they wanna go. Um, a lot of our workshops, um, such as this one, um, with our business acceleration services team and our credit to capital team, also address people along that whole spectrum. Um, we have a program called Next Level Exchange that we do in conjunction with our partners at the Women's Business Development Center and the Chicago Urban League that pairs um, scaling businesses with C-suite mentors for a 12-month mentoring program. And it's really fantastic because it helps, um, it's a very curated mentoring process, which is different from our coaching process, but it pairs you with a mentor who can work with you on a specific targeted issue. So it's very, very curated. Um, and we spend a lot of time trying to find you the exact right mentor. And many of our Next Level Exchange um, graduates have come back and worked with a different mentor on a different subject matter. So it's been a very successful collaboration between founders and C-suite folks and the founders um, that have come through um, the Urban League Women's Business Development Center in Sunshine. Um, we offer coaching and office hours um, with different expertise. Um, we have a credit improvement uh, program because the personal credit needs to be improved before the business credit can be improved. Uh, you've uh, been introduced to our exit the capital manager. There's many other programs that we do there. We also have um, micro grants um, to help pay business expenses and a community micro equity fund that um, Noel manages that can do friends and family capital up to $25,000. Um, our recently launched help desk helps to pair you up with um, folks who are um, professionals in different categories of professional services, whether that's um, website, accounting, graphic design, all sorts of uh, professionals. And then we have a micro grant that accompanies that, $750 towards that. Um, as Riley was mentioning, we support our entrepreneurs in lots of pop-up markets. And we have one co-working space that's going to be expanding, another one that's going to be opening up um, in West Evanston. Um, so, and, and you can see sort of where along the um, client business stages some of those services are. Okay, so let's go back to the exercise. All right. Right, so what we wanted to do is take a little time to um, take a look at Lean Business Canvas. So this is based upon the business model canvas and it's an opportunity um, for you to sort of 
better than the back of a napkin, sort of outline different areas that are important in your business. You know, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? What is the solution? What is your unique value proposition? Um, what is an unfair advantage that you have, right? Um, what are some of the customer segments that are really important to you? Who are going to be some of the early adopters of your business? What are the channels that you're going to use to find those folks? Um, you know, what's the succinct high-level concept? What are some key metrics that you're going to be tracking? Who are some of your competitors and your um, alternatives? What's your cost structure? What are your revenue streams? Um, so if you could move to the next slide, Noelle, um, this template is, I find, a little simpler to use. So I'm going to um, drop this and um, the next slide in the chat. And what I want you to do is um, we're going to spend, spend a few minutes sort of working on your own. Um, and then we're going to sort of break into groups to sort of talk about how this process is coming along for you. Um, and, and if you have some of this research already done, this will be easier for you. Um, but this is one way that you can take a look at sort of your, your product and market um, in a very simple way and sort of see some of the strengths and weaknesses in your, in your business model and or in your management of, of your business. Like, oh, wow, I have that and that, but I'm, I'm not quite with my key metrics. Um, so let me grab, uh, stop the share there. I'm gonna... Yeah, let me grab the template and put it in the chat. Um, so what I would like for you to do is to spend just about three minutes on working on your canvas on your own. So just you taking a look at it and, um, and, and trying to sort of um, back of the napkin, you know, write down as many things as you can. And then we're gonna break into smaller groups where you guys sort of uh, talk through and, and, and share amongst yourselves, like, you know, how you did with this segment and brainstorm ideas to support each other. So go ahead and pull that down. Um, thanks, Billy. And um, take about three minutes to, you know, review that. And then we're going to break out into breakout groups so that you can um, talk with each other about how this process is going and maybe get ideas from the other business owners on the call. Let me know if you have any problem opening um, the template. And I'm going to set my timer now. So when you go into your breakout rooms, um, share, um, if you can share your screen, share your screen to um, sort of share where you are with your um, Lean Business Canvas. Um, but just talk through, you know, what's working in your Business Canvas, ideas that you have, help each other troubleshoot and fill out a couple of um, the different sections. And we're going to debrief a little bit when we come back. So I'm going to give you 10 minutes to do that. But um, Noelle and I will be coming in and checking on you and to see how we're doing. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Um, so let's have a few groups sort of um, report back on how you're filling out the quick and dirty filling out of the of the Lean Business Canvas and and just how your discussion went. So who wants to volunteer? Laura? Yes. I didn't, I didn't, I'm I'm actually at work. Uh, I didn't wind up in a group, but I have done a lean and as well as a, a business model canvas and actually use those to submit for business plans. So um, 
really like them, but I, I didn't get a chance to do it, but I'm going to I'll probably end up revising mine. So I'm looking forward to seeing other folks. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Rodney. Laura, I had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Banks. I, I'm not exactly sure if he wanted to share with you a little bit of what he's doing and the opportunity that he has. Hi, Brian. Yeah, we learned a little bit about his opportunity at his intro, um, but it would be great to sort of see. Yeah, I, I didn't fill out uh, this form. I couldn't figure out how to fill it out. Uh, We've got a number of ventures uh, that we're doing. Uh, the one that I focused on in terms of thinking about this is our home repair uh, business. Uh, there is a uh, huge uh, need in Chicago. Uh, black women uh, over, over 62 years old are disproportionately living in housing that needs major repairs, $10,000 or more. Talking about things like roofs and boilers. Uh, and there's not enough people to fix that. So one of our partners is an example of uh, bills and managers senior housing. They've got a six month backlog on fixing and repairing their clients uh, facility. So we're, we're, we're partnering with people like Hire360, uh, recruiting people from within our uh, our churches and in, in the community. Two big problems, and I'll, I'll shut up, in Chicago. Chicago is the largest area with black men not participating in the labor force. This is considered black men are missing from the labor force. Anywhere in the country, more black men in Chicago are not actively participating in the labor force than any other place in the country. Another major problem, the largest group of missing persons on the Chicago uh, police uh, 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 department's missing person list are black women. So the two issues we're focusing on are black men creating jobs for them. And again, through our networks, making sure that black women, everybody's paying attention to what's happening with black women. So for um... our problems are, are funding for enough people to do all of the housing repairs that are needed, getting more funding for that, identifying funding for people to do housing repairs. We're modeling ourselves after some legislation that's in Pennsylvania where the state will pay up to $55,000 to fix your home. Uh, we're gonna be doing that in Illinois. Uh, finding funding for individuals to fix their homes, finding people to fix the homes, and then finding people, again, with the skills to fix the home. Those are our big problems. So a question for you, um, because you're going to have sort of a workforce and training component to your model, have you considered an L3C Corp instead of a nonprofit status? Not, not, not real concerned about that. Again, we, we've done workforce uh, training in the past, that model and all that kind of stuff. We're, we're, we're more interested in what the business opportunity is and get okay. our churches focused on the business. And so you're going, you're going for um, an LLC or, or whatever types of course. We're, we're, we're already a 501 3C. Okay. So you're already a nonprofit. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. And then, okay. For the purposes of this, I'm not concerned about setting it up. I'm more concerned about organizing a business. Well, if you're set up as a nonprofit, it, it, it might be challenging to structure it as a business. Now, one of the things that a nonprofit development corporation can do is the development deals that you do or partnerships that you have are separate LLCs with their own operating agreement. Um, is the, is the nonprofit, so is the cooperative already established with a legal structure or is the nonprofit launching the cooperative? The nonprofit is launching the worker co-ops. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. 
And there, I know there are a couple of um, legal, well, it started out at one legal clinic, but there are a couple of folks who are trying to also help with um, creating worker-owned cooperatives too. Um, and Hire360 can help you find some of the individuals, but do you have the folks to manage the worker-owned cooperatives yet? No, no. Okay, so still early stage. Um, but I, I love the way you defined your business issue in terms of the number of folks, you know, the, the, the gap in the problem. And um, I think it'll be, and I think you've already identified some of your sort of allies who either have sources of funding for the end user or they have sources of funding, you know, for the cooperative stage. Um, so I think that's going to be really key. Um, and, and then early adopters will also be really interesting too. Who's going to be the early money in to address this issue? Um, and what does that financial stack look like? That's, I mean, again, because of the, the nature of the way I frame the problem is probably going to be the philanthropic community, potentially, um, uh, social impact investors, but, uh, we've had some conversations with community trust, uh, and this actually came out of a conversation with the Chicago Workforce Funders Alliance, which is the major foundations concerned about uh, these kind of issues. But yeah, but now you're bridging into sort of, um, you're bridging into a different, a business ownership phase, which is right. not necessarily where the workforce folks live. And then there's, there's a funding alliance that's a little bit different that funds business support organizations. So you're sort of in betwixt and in between. Um, Noel, any other thoughts on his model and other things to think about? You're muted. Yeah, my mute wasn't coming. Um, I would say be very clear on what it is. Like, are you trying to do a workforce development training program and then staff them into the projects that you've already identified? Um, or are you trying to be a pipeline for an organization who already has identified people who are trained, who you can then connect into? I think that's where I'm I don't know exactly which part you're trying to yeah. do. We're, then, we're not really trying to be a workforce training organization. We'll do some initial stuff to help people get stuff off the ground. We're more trying to be an incubator to like you get people in, in particularly within our congregations, you know, developing their ideas for businesses, developing their ideas for not-for-profits, developing their ideas. We're not, I mean, the support that the business that we'll be in is encouraging them to do that and then providing support for them to do that. But we really don't want to, we've done that. Uh, if, if some individual in our, in, our, in our stuff wants to do that, we'll support it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what we really want to do is get, our focus is, look, we can, we can, we can spend all our time waiting for somebody else to rescue us or we can rescue us and let's start to use our resources our you know our things that we've already got control over let's use that and the needs that people have identified in the community like home repairs right. like um like uh, uh energy we're doing another project where we're reducing uh the energy cost at one of our member churches ebenezer uh to zero and we're going to export that across our churches. We're going to be doing- Can you bring me my other phone off my bed? Hold on. Uh, Brandy, I'm going to mute you. Um, no, you're no- um, So and, we're, we're, we're more interested in helping all of, you know, the people that, that come in contact with us do what they want to do and give them some initial support, connect them to people like you, and connect your people to our, us, as a way, for example, if you got some entrepreneur that's got an idea that will help in, in either of these three areas. Our focus is health, uh, 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 wealth, 
So things like housing, mm -hmm. development, uh, we're doing all kinds of stuff in that area and uh, safety. If you got people who got products in that area, we're interested. We're interested in our network being a, 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 a customer, mm -hmm. you know, being a place that helps to grow, uh, grow businesses and that kind of stuff. Again, the workforce development is part of it. We want to support that, but no, we're, I'm not trying to be, I've done that. I don't want to do that. Right. And, and that's all I was saying, like in terms of, I mean, it's wonderful to have the multiple prongs of here's where we want to, you know, penetrate the community. Here's where we want to connect people. Um, my advice would be, where, where is your leading campaign, right? Like this is the one that is the, the anchor of what we do. And then you can have the offshoots of it that go into, you know, the other areas. Um, but I understand what you're saying. You want to be a hub for people to come in and then you kind of. Right, right, right. Our leading campaigns yeah. are each individually led at each individual church. And there's right. individual campaigns going on in each of these churches. So a challenge would be, right, make sure that the campaign structure is solidified for just one. And so then that way, whatever the next campaign is, it's replicable. So all you're doing is changing what the campaign yeah, is, the structure exactly. the campaign is running, um, is in place. Because what you don't want is a lot of people saying, oh, well, you've got um, all these different campaigns going on. But then when they get there, there's nothing that's going to give them direction of here's, here's your assignment, here's your assignment, here's where you fit into this. Um, so yeah. just making sure that when people get there, right, you're prepared to receive them, right? Stress, stress test. The journey. I know I like that was one of the concepts because that's very much, I mean, in the healthcare side, which is where we started, we talk about patient journeys. I like your idea of customer journeys. And I like that idea uh, to the point of, you know, not even just customer journeys, but community journeys. I want us to start thinking from the perspective of that young 20-year-old who is not in the workforce. How do we get him there? And what's that journey look like for him? Because I think that's the business we really are in, Nicole. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm your Noel. name is real small. Okay. Noel. That's really the business that we want to be in is producing, and somebody said it, producing success by creating, you know, here's the pathway, here's a little hand up, and the church is a vehicle to do that, is, is the message that we're promoting. Wonderful. I would love to talk to you, Brian, offline about um, a project that has, I don't know, probably eight to 10 churches who support it, who have branched out and done a lot of those things. Um, and it's been you around. You have my contact since... information. Um, I, well, I do. I do. Okay, please. Yes, definitely yeah. do. Um, back from when I was doing my church organizing. So I would love to okay. help with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. no, we... Can we have um, one more yeah, hearing so uh, share out about one of the ways that you all looked at the Lean Canvas? One more pairing share out. Um, can I just ask a question really quick? Absolutely. Um, because um, the discussion that we just had um, with you guys was kind of similar to what I want to do, um, but you mentioned something about it. L3. L3C. Yeah. And that so, almost sounds like the path that I want to go down instead of a nonprofit. And um, also working with the higher 360, wouldn't that be kind of like, asking your competition to like say, hey, give me your people so I can train them, you know, and do whatever, you know, so. Yeah, I, yeah, Hire 360 like definitely does help pull people into the construction, you know, workforce. And, and I think they branched out other areas. I've worked with them on construction. Okay. Um, okay. On construction. So yeah, so no, an L3C corporation allows you to do both investments and also get nonprofit and nonprofit philanthropic help. So it's a structure okay. that um, some other um, partners and clients um, have used to um, do the 
the business side and the training side. So I'll give you an example. There's one called BSD Industries. And so they train folks who are re-entering either society or the workforce in robotics. They mm -hmm. have them work in their manufacturing plant and then they place them in other manufacturing jobs. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a business that funds the robotics yeah. training. So, you know what I mean? So, and they were able to get, you know, soft money as well as, as hard financing through the L3C structure. So, um, and we have some folks who are, are yeah. So that's, that's one example of, um, of, okay. of one of the benefits of taking a look at that. So, so yeah. Well, thank you for bringing that up. I definitely think that's the path I want to go down. Awesome. <laughs> Does anybody else want to share out what else happened in their breakout? Hello, this is Markeisha. I will share we was in group five. Okay. So um, as far as the Lean Canvas, we focused more so on our talking about our revenue streams and what type of products and services that we're offering and just trying to drill down on that. Um, again, I um, will be having a, a book bar. So it's like a glorified book club. It's a place for literary lovers, people that love to read um, and anything that has to do with books. So um, all of my events, activities, everything's gonna be surrounded by books. Um, I plan to ramp up my revenue streams by also having a, like a cafe and a bar in there and like a little gift shop. And so that'll help me to uh, have more revenue streams. But then also, as far as with the literary lovers, the artists, the writers, the poets, the publishers, and everybody else that I'm targeting, um, having signature events. And so we kind of, that's what we kind of talked about, both of our offerings and how, what that will look like for, you know, pricing and charging and what, what we plan to get, get from, from that by offering, having so many different offerings. Awesome, awesome. Um, because we want to be respectful of your time, I want to ask the team, um, Noel has an uh, access to capital topic that I would love for us to touch on quickly. So can we have about seven more minutes of your time to make sure that we can get to that um, get to that slide. And I can't see anybody, so I don't know what they're saying. Uh, I see some thumbs up and okay. nobody's yeah. leaving the room. <laughs> we'll keep going. Okay, so yeah. Um, yeah. we talked about this one, Community we'll Business the, Academy. Yep. Yeah, we'll okay. talk about the CBA some more as people have questions at the end. Okay. Yeah, so let's talk funding pass. Funding pass, right? So a lot of people are under the misconception now that, oh, I can just go out and get a grant for my company. There are some grants. However, grants that are connected with for-profit companies are not um, typical. They really were an anomaly because of the pandemic. There are still some organizations that are following through on their diversity and inclusion and, and you know, reaching back and giving back to the um, underrepresented communities. Um, they are a legitimate hunt. Um, so we do encourage you and we will have some workshops um, around loans and the benefits of and the use of it as a tool, okay? At the end of the day, money is nothing but a tool and you gotta know how to make it work, okay? Um, if you are taking a loan and you don't know what you're gonna do with it, then yes, you're looking for trouble. But if you take a loan with the intent of a clear path, you'll have more success. Some of the things that you should absolutely be aware of now, some of the lenders are looking for personal credit scores of 620 or higher, and I've even seen 680 as a, a starting point um, in the lending landscape. Um, they are looking for you to confirm that you have personal finances, that you're able to offset the costs in case your company cannot generate revenue. Um, so they're looking for pay stubs. They're looking for at least two years of uh, personal tax returns. And they're also going to ask you about your own personal budget, right? Because um, as all of you all know, your personal credit is the anchor of your business credit well until your company starts generating millions in revenues, okay? So anytime you have to present your social security number in a loan, it is because they are looking for you to be the personal guarantor. 
Um, some other things you want to make sure you have in place with your company are your articles of organization or your articles of incorporation. You want your EIN number together and you absolutely, absolutely want to have a separate business bank account, no commingling funds. Um, you also want to start making sure you're really tracking your financial um, documents. So that's your balance sheet, your cash flow statement, and your profit and loss statement. Now, I will take the time in our financial coaching and walk you through those documents. But in terms of like deep dive, deep understanding, you need to, um, we have a partnership with um, New Covenant Community Development Corporation where they have a uh, financial dashboard course where they really unpack all of those. They, they go down through the formulas that are associated with each and every one of those um, documents. But you wanna continue to read and learn and educate yourself on this uh, because it's not that it constantly changes, but your math in your company is truly second to your customers, right? So you got your customers, but you have to know what your company is doing. Whether you're a non for profit whether you're for-profit, money is coming in, it's circulating through the company, and somehow it's leaving back out. So you need to know where it's going. Um, you'll also, when your company is up and running and you're starting to look at lenders, they're going to look for you to have two years of filed tax returns. Now, they do a two-year mark because there's, you know, you can't lie too long about what's going on within your company. And I don't say lie in terms of um, you want to hide information, but sometimes you don't want to face the fact of what your company is doing. Don't lie to yourself about it. Get up and in your numbers, okay? Um, and you absolutely want, they'll, they'll be looking at three months of your company bank statements. And that's for a reason. You see all of these um, AI uh, generation uh, platforms that are going on like Plaid, if you're going and applying for certain things, the, the AI is now in place where as soon as you link your business bank account, they will look back through three months of your bank transactions and activities. They're looking at average daily balances. They're looking at average deposits. They're looking at all this information to make sure you're a legitimate company with consistency within your company, all right? And it's consistency of your finances. Um, there's a little QR code. If you're able to scan it, you can schedule time with me. But let's talk about four different areas of how do I get money into my company outside of, um, you know, just a standard business loan. So you can do a personal loan. Oftentimes, this is where people are starting. And a personal loan can come from your own 401k. Um, it can come from your own savings account. But then there's also companies uh, where you can get smaller personal loans. They usually have higher interest rates. So you want to be absolutely mindful of that. And again, this is where you can take a personal loan to yourself, lend it to the company, make sure your paperwork track record is in order. And then as the company is starting to generate money, it's paying you, you're paying that loan. Another way to do it would be um, credit cards or expense accounts. Um, I don't, I don't, like advocate that you just go max out a credit card just because you have an idea because at the end of the day, you still have to pay this money back no matter which route you go with this. Again, the finance rates can be, uh, the interest rates can be pretty high on it. But when it comes to a credit card or an expense account or a line of credit, what you're looking at is that you are taking that and you're paying the reoccurring um, expenses within your company. You're not buying equipment on a credit card, okay? This is, I have, um, a uh, sales, maybe I sell um, wholesale and I give seven days or 10 days before they pay me. Um, maybe I have a 30 day turnaround where I accept my invoices to be paid. So I'm gonna use a line of credit to pay my light bill in the meantime, because the, the payment hasn't come in from a customer. So you wanna make sure that you're using it for reoccurring expenses, not uh, fixed expenses within your company. Um, and an example of that would be like Divi, Divi, not the bike, but Divi has a, an expense account um, that you can use and you can even issue uh, departmental expense accounts, which is pretty um, nice. But again, this is based off of your business um, revenues. They will look at those three months of business statements. Um, I just mentioned lines of credit. Now, lines of credit, uh, we have a relationship with Allies for Community Business. What they do, um, you can do um their loan or you can take it as a line of credit so let's say you go they can you can do a loan up to a hundred thousand um 
25,000 if you're a brand new startup, like literally now this is based off of your personal credit, not off of the business credit, but it will still live in the business name. Uh, but that line of credit, again, you can use that to cover reoccurring expenses, the monthly expenses that come into your uh, company because you have the revenue that's coming in and then you're paying it back on, on time. Make sure you pay it on time. Um, and then the last one, what is this one? Oh, yep. And then you get to the big one, the business loan, right? This is where everyone is like, oh, I don't want to go and do a loan. But if you have um, a loan, like we, we uh, have the community micro equity fund, it is up to 25,000 that you can apply for. It's a 0% interest rate that we carry for two years. There's no accruing uh, fees or anything that are piling up. Uh, so it's like an equity injection, except they're not taking ownership of your company. So they're giving you the money, they're giving you the space to grow with the money within your company. And then uh, come year three, that's when the terms of the loan will start to take place. The interest will start, repayment will start. But uh, we want to make sure that you're thinking of other ways to fund your company besides just, oh, can I find a grant? You can find some grants. Um, if you're if you are going to go the grant route, I absolutely recommend that you get a grant calendar in place where you now know the time frame of the window where um, there's one grant that's uh, they only accept applications from uh, January to October. And then they don't make a decision. You don't even get the money until practically the following year. So you want to be mindful that when you're applying for the grants you have a realistic understanding of the window of time that the application needs to be submitted, how long the review process takes and how long it will actually be before you get the funding. Um, because processing grants, as you can imagine, thousands of companies are looking for the same money. It is a little easier to get a personal loan, credit cards, lines of expenses, um, and the business loans. Um, so again, these are all ele elements that I can walk you through as you're preparing your, um, your applications. We have relationships with CIBC, with Allies for Community Business, the uh, Community Micro Equity Fund, and uh, so many others. So I'm happy to help in any way I can in that one. I will say this, though, the Community Micro Equity Fund is only accessible if you are a CBA graduate. So um, that's one of our our wonderful perks of coming through the program. So those are some quick funding things to think about. Um, the, the last thing I will say about that is make sure you have a use of funds statement in place. That is, you have to know what you need money for and what that new injection of cash will translate into in terms of an increase in your revenue. Right? You don't want to just take money to say, oh, I got some money. No, get the money, use it as a tool, grow your revenue, pay the money back. Okay, Keep the relationship going uh, because then lenders will be more willing. They'll start, you'll be surprised. They'll come and start offering you money and you're not even asking or looking for it. So you're, if you're starting up, you're in the point where you're looking for money your number one funding source is your customer. Make sure you really, really understand where your customers are and make sure that you really walk through the value proposition of what you're uh, bringing to market so that the customers are actively looking for it and it's an easier sale. You don't wanna have to, oh, you need this, you need this. No, you want something where people are saying, I need this, who has it? And then you can step up and say, hey, I have what you need and here's a fair price for it great customer service is going to come with it. Your customers are your number one funding source. Lending situations are secondary, but there's so many opportunities there. Um, but yeah, we will open it up for questions. That is my information for the night. And I will I'll, we'll open it up to some questions before we uh, call it a night. So the QR code that you see in front of us is for those of you who are not yet, um, go back to the first QR Sorry. code. Yeah, again, it's this, okay. Yeah, it moves quickly. It's for those of you who are not already engaged with Sunshine. So this um, program inquiry form helps you to um, get into our, our, our database um, for the Community Business Academy. Um, the next Community Business Academy sessions start um, at August 29th that week is orientation and um, we'll be happy to have you. 
And for those of you who are alums, you guys are our number one source of referral. So if you have a business partner um, or friend who is in the entrepreneurial space, um, please let them know that we have um, award starting in the fall, South, East, West Sides, Arts and Makers, Tech and Digital, as well as Clean Energy Construction Cohorts happening. Um, and then all here. This is our recruitment team, Michael and Annabelle. So we also have info sessions. Um, and definitely questions. Um, thank you for putting the Capital Conversation Purchasing Ads workshop information in the chat. Again, that is that particular workshop is a perk for being an alum. Um, so that's an alum workshop. But what questions, um, what additional questions? do you guys have for us? And I'm gonna go through the chat. Let's see. Uh, yeah, my cursor was moving around. Mm -hmm. Someone's asking for Sylvia's travel agency contact information. You can drop that in the chat. Sylvia had to leave. Oh, she did? Okay. Yeah. But let me see. I might have, I might have um, her business email. Let me check. Just see uh, later on in the chat that she, yeah. Uh, Noelle? Yes. How you doing? This is Marquise. Um, so the question I have was with my, from my staff and agency. Um, I went through a factoring, well, I aligned myself with a factoring company um, just to ensure that I would have money for a uh, payroll every week. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still in the startup phase, so I'm still, like I said, getting some things in order. But I was wondering, um, I haven't applied for like any lines of credit or anything like that, um, or any loans just yet. Mm -hmm. I've been funding the business myself. So would that be another option for payroll or, or what, 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 what should I do with that? <laughs> yeah, so factoring can be, factoring if you do not really understand the terms can go very wrong very quickly uh, because you're essentially selling selling your future revenue at a discount, right? So right. let's say you got $100 coming in and you say, okay, well, I'm gonna take 80. Well, now let's say that $100 invoice doesn't get paid. So now you still have to pay that factoring company their money, you know, as well. And now you've also lost on the fact that that revenue didn't even pay in. And so um, you just want to make sure one, that you're mindful of the terms, but I would say um, look at a line of credit first before you go with the invoice route of factoring. Um, and, and then also make sure you really have you know, maybe you have to tighten in or readjust your um, your invoicing, right? Because some some companies you can say, "Hey, I we need this invoice paid at this portion of time," um, so it can be a, a contract negotiation situation where I think uh, someone said they have a retainer that they offer with their with their services. This is this is really one of those things where you can negotiate with your clients, but. Definitely, let's reach out and and I would say hold off on that thing if you can. I thought can. it was kind of weird. She told me she said make sure that I get all of your invoices and so on and so forth. Yeah, and I was saying like, okay, but what if I don't want you to fund? I don't know who was Marquise. Okay, I'm a. I don't know who I just I muted somebody. I think I might have muted you by mistake. Uh, it's yeah. uh, okay, so that's what I, that's why I was asking because I thought it was kind of weird that she wanted to. Have, she said, "Make sure I get all your invoices, so on and so forth." And then, so that's when I asked. I said, "Well, what if I don't want you to fact, you know, fund me that week because mm -hmm. um, I'm also in the process of hiring people and growing my talent pool? And so, if I was to get like a small contract right now, and they said, hey we need a nurse and I am a nurse. I can go in for, you know, my own business, but I'm not concerned about getting that money, like that money that week because some um, facilities, get, they don't pay for like a 30 days. So yeah. I was just wondering if I didn't want to be funded, would that be an option? Uh, and I would say, yeah, let's, let's definitely do this offline because instead of doing factoring, you could literally get like, a legitimate business loan against your income and revenue versus doing fact. 
And so it might be a matter of just which organization you're talking to as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. But that's good. I'm glad to know it's moving. I, I've talked to you a couple of times. Um, so that's the, I'm glad to hear that funding is uh, a new a new uh, conversation is coming up like this. All right, anyone else with questions? Well, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat the bush, Laura. So uh, <laughs> I'll be right back here tomorrow morning. Um, Brandy, I hope you definitely you had a question. No, I just wanted to say I thought that this was very thought provoking. Even um, when you put up the lean canvas, it was a few things on there that I hadn't even really thought about trying to launch and stuff like that. And then that concept when you said KPI, I'm like, wow, that's a new concept that I never even heard of. So it's just, it's so much to consider. I think everyone else on the line is a little bit further developed than I am. I'm trying to just kick mine off, but it's really putting some things on my mind as to how to market and, you know, what, um, my target target audience and stuff like that should be because I'm like, well, everybody, you know, can use it, but it's making me kind of hone in a little bit differently. So I thought this was really um, beneficial and I wanted to say thank you. Yes, all I can tell you is the entrepreneurial journey is lifelong learning, okay? Like this is, this is my summer of cap tables in uh, <laughs> private equity. And I'm like, oh, wait, okay. Um, so it's constantly learning um, and you should be very proud of yourself for stretching yourself to do it. I, I was telling Laura earlier, I'm like, you know, people, you're not going to grow your company until you're ready to hear the things that will help you grow your company. Because sometimes it's like turns into repetition until it finally you make the decision like, OK, I've heard it so many times. I didn't do it. Maybe today is the day that I will do it, right? We can we can keep giving you all information over and over and over again, but until you make that final decision that today is the day I'm going to change and I'm going to start doing something different, um, you know, you, you'll constant you'll be in a continual cycle of where is this going to go? So you know, lean into it, enjoy the journey, <laughs> you know, because it is a journey. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but congratulations again for stepping out. Okay, and I'm putting my email uh, in here in the chat. S -S -S -H -E 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 -P -P and then let me just um, shameless plug. We have the fall cohort coming up. Please refer your business partners and um, friends, colleagues, family members. Um, we are looking for folks who have clear business ideas and are willing to work on their business instead of in their business. So we are really excited about the fall and also excited about the growth opportunities we talked about before um, with business acceleration services. So hopefully everybody has availed themselves of knowledge about the help desk um, opportunity that's available and has worked with our credit to capital team in one way or the other, either with Elaine or Noel or our partner working credit. Um, so we're really, really happy to serve. Laura? Yes. So I have um I have a young lady that was a vocalist that's, that's playing drums and doing my booking for me now. Yes. And her friend who has a master's in urban planning and sings and is a published author, saw what I did with this young lady in three months. So she's my mentee now. I'm sending her, she wants to be able to leave her job in a year. So I'm sending her to the info session uh, for sunshine. Right. I think this, so I got a few more, I'm sending them. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, exactly. Yeah. Get, get them ready. <laughs> yep. Get them. Thank you so much, Rodney, yeah. That the number one way that we find out about folks who are ready to work on their business is from alumni. So we we could not continue to grow without you. And we try to grow with your needs as well. So thank you for your questions. This is helping 
Quandra, Tyreek, Noel, and I think about other educational offerings, how to update certain curriculum items, you know, what other services we can provide. So your feedback in these workshops really helps us to shape future um, offerings that we can have um, to meet your needs. Um, so I think we can probably officially end it here. We've gone over. Um, I'm going to stop the recording and just say thank you to everyone. And um,